Good afternoon. Thank you for being here and joining me this afternoon. I wanted to provide you a few important updates as we prepare to enter 2021. I hope Nevadans are finding safe ways to celebrate the holidays, enjoy time with their families, and reflect back on the difficult year we have faced together as a state. Today, I am pleased to be joined once again by Shannon Bennett from the state's immunization program. She will help provide an uh, update uh, on the rollout for the COVID-19 vaccine and what Nevadans can expect to see in the coming days and months. As we have said from the start, this is a dynamic and fluid situation, and we learn more and more from the federal government each day about this vaccine rollout. We're being as transparent as possible with Nevadans during this time. Before we get to that update, I first wanna to talk to Nevadans about the recently signed federal stimulus package and how we expect to see that shake out in Nevada. As many of you know, the bill was signed by the president on Sunday. Like many Nevadans, I was glad to see Congress finally reach a compromise to bring more aid to Americans as the fight against COVID-19 stretches into 2021. But we know that this is not enough, not for Nevada and not for the country as a whole. The scale of this pandemic is unprecedented and we need support that matches this need. This is a drop in the bucket towards putting Americans and our country back on the path towards stability. I wanna thank Nevada's federal delegation for continuing to fight tirelessly on behalf of Nevadans. Because of their advocacy, this latest package includes funding for priority areas, such as education, housing, small businesses, and unemployment. I know they will continue to fight for us in the coming months when Congress and President-elect Biden begin considering another stimulus package. The state team, including the governor's finance office, will continue to evaluate the funding in the stimulus package in its current form to determine how this will affect current programs in place, especially in light of the CARES Act spending deadline being extended. We will continue to work closely with the federal delegation as there are more updates. Now I'd like to switch gears a little and talk about the ongoing rollout of the vaccines in the state of Nevada. I'm proud to report that as of Tuesday, 25,636 doses of COVID-19 vaccine have been administered and reported to Nevada Web IZ. Just last week on a regular planning call, our state team was given kudos by the Centers for Disease Control on how well the initial distribution is going in Nevada. So far, we have seen smooth deliveries with a successful rollout of the complex process to redistribute vaccine doses across our great state. And our local health districts and hospitals immediately went to work on lining up their folks to get the vaccine. I'm proud of our state team who work closely with the federal government and pharmacy partners to allocate vaccine doses to long-term care and skilled nursing facilities in the first week, which not all states were able to do. Because of that, immunization for skilled nursing facilities began on December 21st, and vaccination in assisted living facilities will start next week. As you know, these facilities are home to some of Nevada's most vulnerable populations, and this is a huge step to make sure they're protected. Like so much else in the pandemic, this vaccine rollout is unprecedented in nature. Two vaccines that require two doses potentially more vaccines being developed right now, mass distribution on a scale never before done in our country, all while managing a surge in this pandemic and working to meet the historic demand for critical services the vans need during this tough time. The same team of folks who you've seen with me discussing the vaccination rollout are part of our state team that helps coordinate testing, data analysis, and reporting, providing advice and guidance to the state hospitals, businesses, and schools. They now have added the complex logistical challenge of vaccine distribution to their plates. And again, I'm so proud of our battle-born team. But states across the country and here in Nevada are stretched thin. I was pleased to see that the latest stimulus package includes more federal funding for the ongoing vaccination rollout. And I was pleased to see President-elect Joe Biden pledge to more provide more support on the vaccine efforts when he comes into office. I look forward to that support and I will work with anyone at any level to overcome the rest of this terrible pandemic. 
While states have been on the front line of this pandemic for nearly 10 months, this is a national crisis that demands a unified national strategy and solution. I'm hopeful we're heading in that direction. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Shannon Bennett, Immunization Program Manager in the Division of Public and Behavioral Health to provide more updates on how the tier one distribution is going and our ongoing efforts to update the state's playbook to match the latest information from the CDC. Thank you, Governor. It is a pleasure to be here and provide information on the vaccine rollout and the playbook update. As of Tuesday, more than 20,000 doses of Pfizer and almost 5,000 doses of Moderna vaccine have been administered and reported into Nevada WebIZ. The process is going well, and we remain in close contact with all Nevada counties as the first doses are received and administered. For both of the vaccine brands currently in use, two doses are required and the same product must be used for both doses. This week, we ordered the second dose of the vaccine to be delivered next week and administered, administered to those who were the first to be immunized in our state. Going forward, we will work with vaccinators to ensure the second dose is ordered for every dose administered. Each week, Nevada receives an allocation of COVID-19 vaccine from the federal government. Staff assess the allocation against the need in each county and then work directly with the counties and local health authorities to determine equitable orders for each county for the upcoming week. We remain in close contact with our partners statewide to provide guidance as more information is received from the federal government. While Nevada had the framework of pandemic influenza for planning, we knew that framework would have to be adjusted to meet the needs of COVID-19 vaccine response. Using available federal guidance, the program has worked hard to develop a playbook that is specific to our state in ways our vulnerable populations, ethical considerations, unique workforce needs, geography, and concerns from partners and stakeholders. The playbook continues to be fluid. We must remain flexible to ensure a proper and robust COVID-19 vaccine response. We will continue to apply a data-driven approach to vaccine allocation and work with counties to ensure the playbook and the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices recommendations are being followed for priority populations to be vaccinated. As more doses of the vaccine are received in Nevada and distributed to counties, some regions of the state may move into the next tier sooner than others, based on factors such as population size and vaccine demand within a tier group. As we work through the first tier of vaccination, Nevada's medical workforce are able to receive the vaccine and our pharmacy partners are working to vaccinate staff and residents in Nevada's long-term care facilities. Our pharmacy partners are diligently testing their staff to ensure vaccinating pharmacists are COVID negative before entering the facilities to provide vaccinations. We have heard from many facilities across our state that this program is working well. In addition to long-term care facility staff and residents, the immunization program has worked with the State Aging and Disability Services Division to identify intensive supported living arrangements and supported living arrangement facilities for staff and residents to ensure these populations are also included in tier one. We are finalizing the updated vaccine playbook to include the most recent CDC recommendations, information for clinicians, more details on individual populations and guidance related to the specific recommended vaccines. However, prior to the rollout of the completed updates, I wanted to provide you all with some decisions that have been made as of today. Nevada's tiered structure has been updated to include prioritization of people 75 and older in tier two, or what the CDC refers to as phase one B. These Nevadans will be vaccinated concurrently with the first group of Nevada's frontline essential workers. The list of tier two frontline essential workers is not, will not vary greatly from the current playbook, but further updates will be provided in the full rollout upon final review and conversations with stakeholders. Additionally, those 65 to 74 years, years of age and people with underlying health conditions will be vaccinated in tier three alongside Nevada's second group of essential workers. 
Similar to tier two, the essential workers in tier three will, remain, will largely remain the same as those listed in the current playbook, with some adjustments that will be provided to the public in the full rollout. This playbook is a guide that we know will be adjusted as more information is learned and the vac vaccination rollout progresses across the United States. We continue to have a limited supply of vaccine and are working with organizations statewide to provide information on the tiers and prioritization of those unable to work from home and those most likely to come into contact with COVID-19 patients. I will now turn it back over to Governor Sisolak. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. I know your team continues to adjust as necessary as Nevada moves through the response to meet the needs of our state. And I think it's important for Nevadans to know that during the time period when COVID vaccines are limited, the allocation is based on scientific data, key ethical principles, federal recommendations, and our unique implementation challenges. Above all else, our state playbook is designed to mitigate as much disease spread and loss of life as possible. I know Nevadans will continue to have questions related to vaccine distributions, and our goal is to provide updates as frequently as possible. We are working on some exciting new ways to communicate this information to you and look forward to rolling those out in the, in the near future. In the meantime, we're going to remain flexible so we can adjust to new federal recommendations, local considerations, vaccine supply updates, and much more. I want to again thank you and the entire team for their tireless work on this vaccination rollout plan. This rollout is unlike any other, and I am proud of the work you continue to do to help prepare and educate Nevadans for this. Before we conclude, I want to remind Nevadans that while we're working on distributing vaccines as fast as we can, COVID-19 is still very much with us. We must all take the proper mitigation measures to slow the spread of this virus. Please. Stay home if you can, especially if you feel sick. Wear your mask at all times when around people not in your household. Avoid large crowds and practice social distancing. Wash your hands frequently. We have all a lot, we've all got a lot of work to do, and it will take all of us to recommit ourselves to turning things around before a vaccine is widely available. Earlier this week, Dr. Fauci said that January may be worse than December in terms of the coronavirus. Our actions now can help prevent that, but we must all do it together. After a historically difficult year, we have so much to look forward to in 2021, but we must commit to doing all we can to stay safe, to make it to those better days together. Vaccinations are already being distributed to our healthcare workers in Nevada, but it will take time to get to the point of full-scale vaccination of all residents. Until then, we must double down on staying safe to make it through. This is the way we come back stronger and recover, recover faster in 2021. It's not lost on me that Las Vegas is known for being one of the best places in the world to ring in the new year. But this year, we must look different. I know people want to celebrate the end of 2020, and I don't blame them. But if we don't start making smart choices the st at the start of 2021, we will look a lot and feel a lot more like 2020 than any of us want it to be. We must protect ourselves and each other now by avoiding high-risk activities. That includes gathering in large crowds. I'm counting on responsible resort, restaurant, and business owners to strictly follow the state's directives. And I strongly urge anyone in a public setting to follow all of our life-saving guidelines. If you're considering going out, I urge you to reconsider and think of Nevada's healthcare workers who will be caring for COVID-19 patients, our family members and neighbors who are struggling to breathe and make it through the night. They've been providing this care under the most difficult of circumstances for 10 months now, and they are asking for our help have their backs the way they have ours. Celebrate New Year's virtually at home with your household members. Additionally, to stress the importance of taking all safety measures seriously in the coming days and weeks, I wanna share the updates and recommendations provided to Nevada this week from the House Task Force. Nevada is currently ranked eighth nationally in new cases for 100,000 people. 
We're ranked second nationally in test positivity rate and 17th in admissions per 100 hospital beds. This is serious, folks. We don't need to look far to see what it looks like when hospitals are overwhelmed. We must do all we can to prevent that from happening in our state. So please, please adhere to the following recommendations from the White House. If you are over 65 or with significant health conditions, you should not enter any indoor public spaces where anyone is unmasked due to the immediate risk to your health. You should have your groceries and medications delivered. No unmasked public gatherings are safe and no indoor private gatherings are safe without all members fully masked. Unless all members are actively taking the same precautions and regularly testing negative. All states with continued increases, that includes us, must continue with strict public mitigation and continued restrictions. The current restrictions under the statewide pause, which impose strict limits on capacity and gathering sizes, are still in place, and there are no exceptions for these mitigation requirements on New Year's Eve. COVID-19 is not going to take the night off to ring in the new year. Safety is a partnership, and everyone has a role to play. I am asking all individuals to avoid large gatherings. I'm asking our workers to practice all precautions. I'm asking our businesses and local governments to enforce all the rules. I'm asking that our visitors respect our efforts to keep you and our employees safe. The state enforcement authorities will be out in force on New Year's Eve to ensure measures are being followed, including the Gaming Control Board. Additionally, Local governments have committed to being partners in all enforcement efforts many times over the past months, and I'm hopeful they will use their resources to assist in making sure all public health measures are followed. Let's all do the best we can to protect ourselves and each other, because I believe that 2021 will be Nevada's greatest comeback story ever, and I want all Nevadans to be part of it. I'm confident we have many great reasons to have the greatest New Year celebration ever next January 1st. I wish you all the safest end of 2020 possible. Stay well, stay safe, and stay healthy. Believe in yourself and believe in Nevada. Thank you. At this time, my staff will coordinate any questions. Megan. Thank you, Governor. This is Megan Delaney, Governor Sislax Communications Director. Um, again, we'll use the raise hand function to coordinate the Q&A here. So if you're a media member on the Zoom with us, uh, if you could use the raise hand and then I'll call on you. So Governor, we'll go to the first question. It's Bill Denser from the RJ. Bill, you can unmute and ask the Governor your question. Hi, Governor. Hi, Shannon. Uh, thanks for doing this. Um, the, the playbook has a section on the communications plan for the vaccination program. And uh, we've been getting, and I'm sure other media have as well, a lot of questions from people who don't, or, or who aren't getting this information as timely as possible. Are you at this point um, satisfied with how communication is going? Uh, can it be improved? What other vehicles besides uh, these press conferences are being used right now to get word out to average folk? Well, uh, we're always looking to improve it and always a lot more can be done. But Shannon, if you wanna jump in on that one. Thank you, Governor. Thank you for the question. Um, yes, we will be enhancing our communication strategies uh, throughout the weeks and months ahead uh, with specific focus on those people that we're trying to reach. So we can look forward in the coming weeks um, to messaging specifically for our 75 and older Nevadans and then our frontline essential workers. If I could just follow up briefly. Uh, does the state anticipate any changes outside of the continued CDC uh, recommended, uh, recommended changes? Nevada is, every state is unique, but Nevada is particularly unique. We will take all the factors into account, our workforce, our economy, uh, our aged population and so forth, but we will definitely use CDC guidelines, but they'll, we will also flavor that with local guidelines. Thank you. Thanks, Governor. Thanks, Bill. We'll go to the next question. We'll take Lauren Martinez from Fox 5 as the next question. Um, after Lauren, we'll do Sam Metz from the AP. Lauren, it looks like your microphone's unmuted, but I'm not able to hear you. Can you try again? Hello. 
Hello? Okay, we've got you now, Lauren, go ahead. Okay, uh, Governor, I have a question regarding our seniors. Um, you mentioned that those that are 65 and up are at risk, but we're seeing other states like Florida and Texas vaccinating um, this, this age group. So why not bump them up higher? Well, it would, in an ideal world, we'd like to bump everybody up higher, and I'll let Shannon go after this. Our immediate need, our immediate number one on stage, uh, tier one, was our frontline healthcare workers and those that are confined to uh, nursing home facilities and skilled nursing facilities. But Shannon, go ahead. Thank you, Governor, and thank you for the question. Um, we will be following CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practice Framework, and they recommend 75 and older to be included in that phase 1B or, or Nevada's tier two. The reason that they are recommending that is because um, we see a higher mortality rate, especially with those 75 and older. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Lauren, for the question. I know there's a new version of the playbook that we're working on, so we'll have that all spelled out there. I think I said we would take Sam Metz next, um, and then we'll do Riley Snyder from the Indy after Sam. Hi, thanks for taking my question. Governor Sislak and Ms. Bennett, you both said we vaccinated about 25,000 people thus far. I don't have the exact number, but I believe that's less than 20% of our initial allotment. Why aren't more shots in people's arms? And this is similar to Lauren's question. Shannon, you talked about concurrent tiers. States like Colorado and Texas and Florida have revised their tiers contrary to CDC guidelines to vaccinate older people more quickly. Shannon, you talked about concurrent tiers. Would we ever do something like those states are doing? Shannon, go ahead. Thank you, Governor. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, the, the doses that we are seeing administered into Nevada WebIZ are likely lagging behind the doses that are truly been administered. It is a large lift to um, put doses administered, enter doses administered into the Nevada WebIZ system. And these vaccinators in our local community that would be responsible for inputting that data into Nevada WebIZ are also um, managing the storage and handling of a new vaccine and, and lo the logistics of these vaccination events. So I think what we're seeing is simply a data lag there. And um, to answer your other piece to the question, we will be following um, the advisory committee on immunization practice guidance from the CDC. And Thank you, Shannon. Just to Thanks. clarify, to fact check, do we know how many uh, vaccines we've been allocated, how many we re received, so we can calculate a percentage of shots in arms over initial allocation? I think, Sam, what you're not understanding is we know what is being delivered. I don't have that in front of me, but there's a lag in the time frame from when the uh, dose is actually administered to when it is entered into the WebIZ program. So it wouldn't give you a valid number. So we, we're spending more time vaccinating than we are data inputting at this time. Thank you. Sam, we can follow up with you to make sure you have um, that information. Uh, Riley Snyder from the Indy Next and then Brian Hoffman from KTVN. Great, uh, thank you so much, Governor and Shannon for taking the question. Um, wanted to ask, is there any plan to include members of the state legislature in the vaccination tier list uh, by the time they meet in February? Is that in the cards or part of the playbook at all? Well, we'll be coming out with the whole playbook to plan next week or the week after, so it'll be prior to the legislative session. But it's a difficult balancing act, Riley, to take people that everyone that's in need, those with underlying conditions, some of those in the legislature will also follow into another group that they would have priority on. So we're gonna have to wait and see in terms of what the final recommendations coming out of the CDC and our own committee are. Thank you, Riley. Thank you, Governor. We'll go to Brian Hoffman for the next question. Um, and then after Brian, we'll do Joe Bartels. Excellent, thank you so much. And uh, thank you so much for doing this, Governor. I was wondering if uh, we can uh, get a location for the amount of people that have been vaccinated so far, and if we're going to be updating that daily, weekly, monthly, I know there is that delay, but uh, seeing those numbers rise might give some people some hope. So if we, would we be able to have access to that in the future? Shannon, what is the plan for that? We are currently assessing ways to share data more frequently. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Brian, for the question. Um, I think I we want to be as transparent as we can with this information. 
The problem is we don't want to get tied up in the reporting part of it where we're spending more time providing reports and having people input information as opposed to administering the actual vaccine. So we're trying to balance all of that and we'll come up with a better uh, situation in the future. Thank you, Governor. Sorry for cutting you off there. We'll go Joe to the next question. And then I think I have Sasha from KLAS. So Joe and then Sasha, please. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Governor, for taking my uh, my question here. Uh, COVID-19 task force met yesterday. They were scratching their heads regarding the Fremont Street gathering. Clark County Chairwoman Marilyn Kirkpatrick warned hospitals could be overrun if this gathering were to go forward. She also said that she'd be asking for that reduction in the gathering to 7,000 people. That's well over the 50 person limit. There was issues of the First Amendment versus public health were being thrown out as possible reasons as to why this should go forward. Governor, I was just thinking, uh, was wondering what your thoughts are on this. Well, look, I've not pulled any punches with anybody. This is a tough balancing act. It's been a tough balancing act since June when we started opening back up. I've been upfront about how difficult this is. We've made adjustments along the way. We're now in this pause. Our decisions are grounded in how we can keep as many people say, as safe as possible while keeping as many jobs going as possible, allowing families to pay their bills, keep their homes, feed their kids. But with the balance comes a great responsibility for everyone in the state to do what they can to be safe. I've been very clear this whole time about the importance of masking, social distancing, and gathering of people. It's on every individual every local government and every business to do their part and to take this seriously. There's no secret formula. There's no secret sauce. At this stage in the game, we know what is considered a high risk activity. And large gatherings are included in high risk activities. I understand that on New Year's Eve, particularly in Las Vegas, it'll be difficult to prevent the organic gatherings of people. And that's why it's critical that businesses and leaders are vocal about the risks. But to organize and promote a gathering with a ticket or a fee, as if it's a business, business as usual, that's just plain irresponsible. The virus doesn't care about these definitions, these loopholes, call it a gathering, an assembly. The science prevails. And the science says that the more people in a gathering, it's guaranteed that a portion are gonna have COVID, either symptomatic or asymptomatic and they will spread that disease. The larger the group of people, the larger the number that will get sick. Of those, a percentage will end up in our already overwhelmed hospitals. And sadly, a percentage of those will die. That's why we limited low organized gatherings. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Joe, for the question. We'll go to Sasha next, and then um, Gerard will do next question after Sasha there. Oh, hi, Governor. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, regarding the statewide pause, I know we've been in this pause for uh, quite a few weeks now. I know our, uh, our positivity rate is still higher than we'd like it to be, but it has dipped slightly. Is there evidence this is, you know, working? This is it, uh, stopping the spread of COVID-19 to a point? Or what data do we have on that, if there is any? Well, I'm sure that you follow our numbers as closely as I do follow our numbers, and we see it kind of ticking up and ticking down. We're just a couple days out from the Christmas holiday and Hanukkah, and you saw that travel was exceedingly high across the country over Christmas. We're going into New Year's Eve tomorrow, and we're going to see how that plays out. That's why we went to January 15th to see what the uh, impact of these couple holidays are going to do. Large gatherings, as I said in the previous answer, aren't going to help. They're not going to minimize the spread. They're going to make the condition worse, and they're going to make it more difficult for healthcare workers. So where we're gonna be on January 15th is gonna to need to be dependent on how seriously we take these measures now. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Sasha, for the question. I have two more folks with hand raised. That's Gerard and Brett Forrest. Um, so we can go through those two questions, please. Gerard. Uh, yes, Governor, thank you for your time. Uh, my question has to do with uh, respect to the um, uh, violations that may or may not occur on New Year's Eve. Um, uh, is there going to be more policing of, of some of these gatherings and some of these um, restaurants and clubs and things like that? We've checked around and all of them seem to be at capacity. I know you're not supposed to be advertising a New Year's Eve event, but most of them have some sort of special. 
and you have to pre-purchase this. And um, obviously there are limits, but there's probably a good chance that a lot of these limits are going to be violated. Is there any special policing order that you have in place? Well, I'm hopeful that all these limits aren't going to be violated on New Year's Eve. As I said previously, it's up to the businesses to enforce the regulations that are in place. It's up to the citizens, the patronized businesses that enforce the regulations. And it's important that they keep their employees and their customers safe. I can tell you that uh, Gaming Enforcement Division is going to be out in full force tomorrow. Uh, the various business license entities and uh, response units in the counties and the cities are going to be out. OSHA is going to be out. So we're going to have full-fledged enforcement available. This isn't an idea of playing gotcha or a loophole or take advantage of the night and make money. It's not worth it to take advantage of the night and try to make a few extra bucks. And I know everybody's struggling. When I say this, I know everybody's struggling. If you think about the potential impact of a breakout at an event, at a restaurant, at a bar, at a facility, and what the end ramifications can be of that. So we're asking everybody to do their part, to follow their recommendations. If everybody does their part, I'm confident we'll come out okay. Thank you, Governor. Thank you for the question. The last question I have um, is from Brett Forrest. So Brett, you can unmute and ask the Governor your question or Shannon. All right, thank you. Yeah, Brett Forrest with News 4 here. Uh, could you clarify which tier that 75 and older group now falls under? And also, is there any concern for the supply chain delay of the second booster shot getting to people who already received their first dose of the vaccine? Thank you for your Kevin? question. Thank, thank you for your question. Um, so the 75 and older population will be vaccinated concurrently with frontline essential workers in tier two. Um, and I do not have any concerns about the second dose. Um, we are already well into um, our, our orders to get that delivered next week for administration for all of those who received their, their doses that very first week. Great, thank you for the question and thank you for that answer, Shannon. I don't have any more questions um, in the queue here. So Governor, if you have any closing remarks before we end today. Thank you, Megan, I appreciate it. And I appreciate everybody for tuning in and listening and watching today. I'm gonna wish you all a very happy 2021. Kathy and I and my family all wish you have a happy and healthy and safe year. But a lot of what happens in 2021 is gonna depend on how we end 2020. And I ask you to please do your part. Practice the protocols, wearing a mask, social distancing, avoid large gatherings, wash your hands. If everybody does their part, I'm confident we can have a safe, uh, healthy and happy new year and a great 2021 as we come out of this coronavirus pandemic and get back to the Nevada that we all know and love. So thank you all very much, everyone.